As Fox News rolls out their campaign to demonize the protesters in Baltimore, we have a, a rare and unexpected defender, in some cases at least, Dr. Phil, who stepped in to teach the, uh, the hosts of Fox about the nature of the grievances of the Baltimore community. Let's watch. And we keep saying, where's the character, where are the parents, where's the opportunity, where are the role models? How long are we going to keep saying, where are they, and what can be done to change this? Because those kids <clears throat> have the same potential as your kids and our kids. Well, I, I'm not sure that's true. I'm not sure they, they may have the same potential, but I'm not sure they have the same opportunities. Opportunity. Yeah. Because the... the the fact is, the school system is not necessarily the same. The it's resources not. Is not, are not necessarily the same. The leadership that they have from the parents because of the generational uh, pass-throughs are not the same. There's no question that they have a steep hill and a tough road to hoe. I love that he brought up wow. the education element of this mm. uh, because... When you really consider the fact that where you're from determines what type of education you receive, it's really hard to make an argument that we're all on an equal footing, right? Like, I'll never forget the story that we did about this one black woman who lied about her address just so her yes. child can go to a good school. And you know what happened to her? She got prosecuted for that. Okay, so if you're living in a poor area that doesn't have good schools, well, sorry, that's all you get. That's your big opportunity. And yeah. so I love that Dr. Phil did this. I mean, I didn't expect him to be an ally in this particular issue, but he actually brought some sanity to that discussion. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, going to that, that they don't have the same opportunities is that they criminalize normal behavior in the inner city. Like, that, so that guy was, they, uh, they broke his spine because he made eye contact with a cop. Now, I've never been chased because I made eye contact with a cop. I don't think you have. I know. Right? So, because we're white. And uh, so that, so, or the, the story we reported last week here about the cops showed up uh, to an argument at a gas station. The, gas, the argument was over. The guy had baggy pants. So they arrested him for baggy pants. So this is criminalizing behavior. So that doesn't happen to Brian Kilmeade's kid or right. Steve Ducey. His yeah. kids aren't overly pro uh, policed like that. Yeah. They don't take, they're not going to not be able to get into a college loan because they got caught with a joint. That's not going to happen. They're not going to be criminalized. They're not going to have a felony on their conviction, on their record for the rest of their life. That doesn't happen. Yeah. So is it difficult? Go ahead. I, I just want to ask a question and I'm completely ignorant on this. So please let me know. So the big issue was that they found a switchblade on him. He's on a, Freddie Gray. Mm. So is it illegal to have a switchblade? Well, then I guess we should arrest all the Boy Scouts. Yeah. I just don't understand I, I don't about, why that's... I don't know about Baltimore specifically. I think generally knives are okay. Switchblades, there's particular laws against. But I would again say that that's pocket. probably... Has I, don't know to do I mean, it's amazing that we want to arm every individual in this country, regardless of mental <laughs> no, illness or regardless okay. of whether or not they're on a freaking terrorist watch list, right? right. Only but we, guns, Anna. But we break someone's spine if they have the audacity to have a switchblade? Really? He, I mean, <coughs> I just, I, I, sh I should look into the laws in Baltimore about switchblades. I guarantee you that if I'm walking through the streets of Baltimore with a switchblade, no one's going to give me a hard time about it. Yeah, and I, I'm glad that Dr. Phil brought up the uh, the generational pass-throughs. I'm sure that that's not a phrase that's going to be heard very often in on Fox, of course. That's a great way to put that, generational pass-throughs, right? Yeah. So he's talking about generational problems with poverty, right, that were created because of institutional racism. Yeah. And if you want to talk about blacks rioting, we, you, I saw you did a second earlier about uh, all the whites that riot when their sports team wins, yeah. which I think that's why they canceled the Baltimore Orioles game, because if they win, the fucking whites were going to go crazy. But, the, <laughs> but, but, you know, there used to be, uh, after the World War I, black communities were thriving in America. In fact, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, there was a community called Greenwood, which they used to call the Black Wall Street. And they had things in their community that the whites didn't have. They had indoor plumbing. Whites didn't have it yet. They had, and they would keep the money circulating in their own community to where a dollar got spent a hundred times before it left their community. Mm. Well, the whites got sick of that shit. <laughs> And they burned down their fucking 35 square blocks. Uh, they, they burned it down. Uh, 300 people died in 1922. So that really happened in Tulsa. They eliminated their... And that happened all over the country. That's just one example. Mm. There's an eight-page article I just found that, that has one example after another. That's just one. Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma, did not know that they had a more advanced society than the white people. The whites got pissed off. They said a black kid assaulted a white woman in an elevator. Yeah. And so they went and burned down all their houses. Yeah. 35 square blocks. So, uh, again, this is uh, the same kind of thing. Oh, uh, Islam's worse than 
Christianity. Where's it? No, it's the people are violent, and let's stop pretending that somehow blacks are born more violent than whites are born more violent. Mm -hmm. Situation creates violence. This didn't. This uh, these uh, uh, riots don't come out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, they come out of a history like the history that you're describing. Right.